Hey guys, Paul here from Melbourne Performance Coaching in our podcast. Now we're looking at, well, what day is it? Maybe this fifth episode of New Year. So time's flying. Uh, this one I'm talking about the principles from is a book again, The Ultimate Body Transformation Expert. Contact me for a copy. Uh, this one's talking about, so revisiting every single uh, chapter of the book and all my kind of principles and how I've changed them. Uh, nutrition principle two is putting the client in charge, how it super, uh, supercharges your success. So the basic idea of this principle is that I like how for nutrition, I think it's particularly important to use client-centered coaching. So to define client-centered coaching, it's basically putting the client in charge of a decision-making process. What this does is it creates a higher level of accountability for the client because it helps them come up with a change for them to make that they can actually adhere to. This is uh, different to the normal, approaching of co normal approach of coaching, which is a coach-centered model, which involves diagnosis and a drill sergeant approach. So telling your client, you're eating too many carbs, that's why you need to, that's how you lose weight. It's very much diagnosis problem. It's very much like going to a doctor and they're like, all right, cool, you've got this problem. That's not what we do as personal trainers, first and foremost. And secondly, for something like nutrition coaching, it's not very useful in most scenarios. Um, I also talk about the food journal being the best tool for nutrition coaching and a couple of questioning frameworks to go through with your clients and how to use your client's nutritional literacy to help them out. So how have I changed my viewpoints and my application of this principle over the last year? So I still am a big fan of client-centered coaching. Uh, instead of a food journal, I, I still, I am probably not using as many uh, written food journals because I don't see people anymore. I've gone quite digital uh, in terms of working mainly online. So using things like Google Forms or my fitness power chronometer are very, very useful. What I have changed my mind a little bit on is the usefulness of tracking calories and macros for clients. And I'm at the point where in terms of thinking for my clients for the long term, so if I want to the best way to judge your success as a personal trainer, if you can take someone for 24, 52 weeks, whatever it is, and get them an amazing body transformation result, and then they quit like that, and you come back and see them 24 weeks to 26 to 52 weeks later, and they're in the same shape or better, you did awesome. That's the kind of success that determines that you are an awesome personal trainer, where you can give the clients the long-term tools to achieve results. So what... If I'm going to work within that framework a lot of time, I do want my clients to learn how to track their macros and track their calories. Not because I want them doing it for the rest of their lives, but because it's a very useful skill to have. It's building up their nutritional literacy. So one thing with having your client in charge and using client centered coaching, it's a really useful tool and it's a really great way to go about you know, helping your clients find a change that they can do, but it needs a little bit more. It needs to be done alongside a concomitant increase in the client's nutritional literacy and nutritional knowledge. So their ability to understand things like how to read nutrition labels, their ability to understand what type of fuel is best for providing optimal exercise performance, optimal health outcomes, optimal body composition outcomes, and then how to build that into a way where they can basically track without tracking their food when they're going out and eating and stuff like that. So I've had one client who I'll post her pictures on the socials where I've been training her for the last five months. She had a very limited nutritional knowledge when she started and that's okay. That's totally fine. Like she knew foods were healthy and all that stuff, but she didn't really know what to do. We started off very much doing a client centered approach where I would make some suggestions, but she, she would ultimately dictate what was going on. And my job was to basically use some of the frameworks in the book, example, impact change, ready, willing, and able to slow her down a little bit and to make sure that the steps that we were doing were achievable. And she managed to get away before COVID happened, uh, or the second time around, I guess, and got into state and was able to eat out every day for, I think, couple of weeks, three weeks maybe, and not really track her food, but by using the knowledge that she had built up over that time, basically maintained exactly the same body composition, was able to enjoy herself thoroughly and didn't have any guilt uh, associated with eating that way. So for me, that was a real win. So like I know if 
for whatever reason she stopped training or whatever i know that she would keep getting really good results particularly when it comes to nutrition coaching and that's really something that i think is the most important thing about client head coaching it's not only listening to the client and getting what they want to do or what they think is the appropriate next step it's also at the same time giving empowering that client with the, with information with knowledge with actionable tips to allow them to become the expert on their own bodies, how to put together their own type of programs, probably not training if you're doing high level performance because that's a full-time job, but to give them the skills that they need to take these take these things and to make them into a lifestyle change rather than just something they do for four to 12 weeks. So guys, that's how I've updated my viewpoints on client-centered coaching. It's also integrating client-centered education to help build up a higher level of nutritional literacy so they can make better decisions over time.